you do is bring Mr. Till Drag up, okay? Right behind Till Drag up will be Mr. Honeyboy. Elvin, let's give a round of applause as we get Till Drag to the bandstand, okay? We got it. My head is bald. Slow down in A. See, when I was young, man, I used to do it on my feet. Now that I got old, I have to take a damn seat. Help us, would you? Slow down, fucking A. See, he, he's bald. The man is bald. He got a bald head. He said that's the reason women like him because his head is bald. I like him. All this here for parking lot. The fish box was sitting over there. Bandstand was right over here. And when did it disappear? Disappeared uh, around 90, around 96. 96. Oh, this Yeah. He was the fish box. Yeah. 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 Stole the fish ending it. There we go. You the stalls, the fish stalls were still standing here? Yeah, this over the bottom car, this was all parking lot here. Oh, this was parking lot? Yeah, see, this is years ago, this was a gas station. Gas station? Yeah. So that's what it was, and he turned it into a fish market. They turned the gas station into a fish market? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and a gas station and a big parking lot. See, they used to rent trucks here. You haul oh, trucks. Right, so they had the space? Yeah, they had plenty of space. This whole half of that lot was the fish market. I see. So you had a you had a um, thing going on with the fish market. What, what did you do with the fish market? I used to haul the fish and I drove the truck to bring the fish from Mississippi and Alabama. Uh huh. And then we played him. See, the fish market years ago used to be down kids there in Washington. He had a small place. So at this time, they had him tow this bus barn down. So it looks slow around here. So I talked him into moving here 
I said, they're going to build a barn back, man. Take that place. So he listened to me. That when they built the bus barn back, then you had plenty of people around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so was it crawfish or, or what kind of fish? fish Catfish, you? buffalo. Okay. Uh, garfish, silver bear, had all kind of fish. Trolls, you know. But there's a lot of fish in, in the lake as well, isn't there? Yeah, but see down in Mississippi now, the government, what happened, they will give you money to raise food so people stop raising cotton and stuff like they used to. They put big fish ponds. Oh. Okay, okay. And so the government helped you because you're raising food. Okay. Yeah. So that, that, that's why all them fish farms down in Mississippi. Okay. And they don't need, they need less help. You dig a pond, you put your way out there, you take a way out there and hit a supply of four ponds. Okay, it's that easy. This fish. Ah, yeah. <laughs> but you got to be, you got to be in solid ground, not yeah. sandy ground. No, no, otherwise. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So it, in the buckshot murder they call it. Okay. So hit a hole with water. Okay. So they take a a a, a grass cob, a grass cob, and the fish got teeth. You don't eat him. You put him in there, and he eat the grass around the edge of the pond to keep it clean. Yeah. <laughs> and you take say six people and work a thousand acres. But if you were farming it, you need the equipment. And like a tractor now costs you over a hundred thousand dollars, so you know, they take an old tractor, they don't need no new equipment. Okay. To take care of fish for. So you drove your truck every week, every two weeks down to Mississippi? Twice a month. Twice a month. And and how big was that trick? So uh, uh, Well, uh what happened? See, they have a brood fish, which white people like small fish. So they got a shoot. If that fish too big to go in that chute, then they sell it to the live hauler. Then you get it cheap. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's the way that goes. So I'd go down there and wait when they get ready to pull the pond. If I go and I look at the fish, see what they do. A lot of them, they think they're slick. They'll load that fish up with food to get more weight. Okay. But the fish will change color. So you don't want to haul that fish. <laughs> Because it's too full, and okay. then he'll throw up, and it won't live to get back here. Okay. So I go and I look at my fish. If I ain't like the way it looks, I say no. I wait two or three days, and then go back. Give me a <laughs> loaf. <laughs> you got to know. Okay. I have brought a whole load of right eighteen wheeler, big long truck, trailer, had tanks on it. I have come back and only four fish did. But you got to know how to haul. How do you do that? Well, you got oxygen. You, you, I had a pump on the front of the truck. We pump air to the fish. Okay. Keep the oxygen, keep them alive. Oh, okay. And when it's real hot, like in Mississippi, I go to Ice House. I put me so much ice in these tanks. I get down by K. Royal, Illinois. I stop and ice them down again. Okay. Keep the water cool. Oh, right. Otherwise, it's too hot. People die. Yeah. You will lose yeah. money. That way you got you keep them alive, you know. So did you do this for a long time? Did you the transport of the fish? I transported them about three years. Okay. And then I stopped. He, my buddy had the fish market, but he made me mad. And then what happened? I came back from a trip, and I stopped at a club. My, one of my friends, Nick time they had a club. Stopped there, had a beer. Somebody dropped a mickey on me. So I was coming down Roosevelt Road. I blacked out. Oh. I, yeah, I had a bad accident. Oh. So I broke all my toes. They removed my spleen. Oh, yeah. And everything. So then I said, Buster Bond, he was a bass player. Then I taught him how to drive the truck. <laughs> You know, so after I, tell, after I got well, I was on credit for a whole year. After I got well, then I went taking this job. So I worked that job for 18 years. As a mechanic? Huh? As a mechanic? All right. I worked there as a truck driver. 
So then I was driving a truck, and I kept on telling them what was wrong with the truck. The mechanic didn't believe me. So he told me, if you want to believe him, hire him to be the mechanic. So they took the truck to the shop, and it was what I said. So I come in one day, they said, what would it take for you to be our mechanic? I said, what do you mean? Come to work on time. I said, I come to work on time. We're going to add some gravy. I said, no, you got to add some meat to this. So then I went in the shop and started mechanic. So then at first, a whole new career. Huh? A whole new career. Yeah. So then we had to do welding, so they had this guy to weld. Every time I need something well, I got to wait on him. So I got to weld and start to live with myself. Then I didn't need him no more. I did all the well Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and so, we're down south. When I was younger, I drove a truck. And this company, they had cranes and stuff. And I had to get up in the crane with the grandson during the summer and water, so I knew how to operate. So one day the boss, he went down. He come in, I was out. He said, I didn't know you could operate the crane. I said, I'm trying. He said, you're doing pretty good to me. So they found out I could operate everything. <laughs> I had it. You did the ball. Yeah. When did you start playing music? When I started? Yeah. Well, when I was about <laughs> six or seven years old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but then you started singing or, or what? Or, or, where, where well, you? when I first started, I got a guitar. I was playing my guitar. So we was at this club down Roosevelt Road one night. And this guy, Nick Tide Nate. That was down in Arkansas, or what? No, that was here, but I was singing when I was in school. Okay. I tried. Okay. You know, because I take my battery radio, we didn't have electric. Okay. We had a battery radio. So at uh, night, I take the radio and put it in the bed with me and listen to the blues, because my grandparents didn't like that. Yeah. Okay. So, the devil's music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when I go to school the next day, I can sing to the little girl. So oh, that's the point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. So then I got here. My mother got me a good time. See, my, my mother came here in 1950. My mother and father separated when I was four months old. Okay. My grandparents raised me. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I came here in 1954 to visit my mother. I was 14 years old. I came here, visited her, went back, and then I went to Texas where my, old, my mother's brother was. Stay down there. I came back here in 59. I stayed a while. I left. I went to Texas. Then I went to the Army. And then I came 1966. I came back here. And I've been here ever since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when. So you played music off and on? Or, or, or? Yeah. Okay. So that's when I got my little guitar. So okay. then I'm on the road to play guitar. So we were down at this club. And this guy was singing Hollywood Wolf song. I said, man, I can sing that shit. We bet to have a pint of whiskey. I got that song, and the people clapped their hands. I've been singing ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Whiskey started it all. <laughs> yeah, you know. We bet to have a pint of whiskey. I said, call me up. She called me up. What, what song was that? You remember? What Hollywood Wolf song was that? Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. Smokes act like and, and so I went. I'd go. I'd go. Smoke, smoke that glass. Well, give it a try. Give it a try. You can do it. Of course you can. <laughs> so I went and bought me a little PA system, man. No, you don't need one. <laughs> and, then, and what happened? I didn't know no better. <laughs> this was something for a house or something. So I come in the club. I told the drum. I said, man, I got me a PA system. He said, man, that little shit, don't bring that shit in here. <laughs> That's my house. <laughs> so then, I had to go get me the real stuff. The real stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Not the small ones. <laughs> Not the small ones. I had the small ones. I thought I had something. I didn't know. So I went by me a big one. And so then, I was working. And like on weekend, I go to the club, asking about playing. I have paid the band out of my pocket just in order to play. And then, by me doing mechanic work, people would follow me because they covered my shop and stuff. I had a couple shops here in this city. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So people would follow me, so I'd have a crowd. So the, the band guys knew that. They know the people going to follow me. 
So they have me to hold the dough and let me sing at the last end, the closing okay. time. You know? If you were there, the people were there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they hold me, you know, for the people. Yeah, yeah. So then I met Howlin' Wolf. So Lee Shot Way and I, we went to one of Howlin' Wolf's shows. Lee Shot got me up there on the bandstand. I thought I done did something. Wolf got on that mic and talked about me. I went, I said, man, I said, I don't know. I said, please teach me. <laughs> <laughs> and what did he say? Uh, Wolf gonna teach me. No. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. He did. Mm -hmm. He was a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. All right. See, I didn't understand. Your drum is your timekeeper. I'm be looking at the guitar player, and he tell me when to sing. I didn't, I didn't understand. So Wolf took me, set me down, taught me timing, and when he wasn't playing, he told his band to go help me out. Okay, okay. So I had top musician playing when I started because of Wolf. Oh, so he was very influential. Yeah. 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 All right. And so you know he told me come help me out. So I go down, you know. And so I had another guy, Highway Man, and they had a couple little wolves. But now when Wolf wife was with him, I speak and go sit somewhere else. The rest of them, they'd be around him, and he was jealous. So then Highway Man was like, Wolf, who wife that? You was a little wolf. No wolf gonna get mad. He ain't gonna let them sing. Me and Highway Man, we know we gonna sing that night. So <laughs> we had a thing going on. And how did you get your name, Tail Dragon? Wolf. The wolf name, gave it to you, yeah? The wolf, wolf gave it to you. Mm -hmm. You were kind of slow, right? I, I would drag it on slow. the timing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't know time. I'd drag my tail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah right. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great nickname, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good name. name. Mm -hmm. So you owe a lot to wolf. Yeah, yeah everywhere you go, I follow him. You know. Because he, he, he taught me, and he sat down and explained things to me. Like Muddy Waters, if Muddy Waters was playing a place and with some ladies there, Muddy Waters might sit down there and let the band play a whole set. Wolf Band, when they play one number, he hitting the band stand. Okay. No smoking and no drinking. But now when you finish playing, <laughs> all the whiskey food you want, yeah. he buy. Oh yeah, he was. He said he's going to play. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's well, good. He buy. But that band stand, don't bother him. You could go up and sit on him when he tell you move. All right. He was strictly about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's the man is tight. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was strict. And like he was, I used to slip he would drink. But he drank too much. And Wolf would find it out. Okay. Yeah. You know, he never knew I gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go to the to, to Maxwell Street, what's left of it? Yeah. And talk some more? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. Yeah. All right. Because, because you're full of stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great full Hollywood story. <laughs> he I was a great man though. A lot of people thought he was mean. But now if he didn't like you, he'd tell you. Oh yeah. He was, he was straight. Yeah. yeah. Straight. Stay away from the wolf, man. I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> okay.